ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this the news beat presented to you by Lady Slyke and Jess Santino. Follow, follow the beat, follow the beat from the studio to the street. Info with the flow keeps you sharp and in the know. Sit back, relax, enjoy the news. Follow. 2017 gave us a new president in Gambia and a change in leadership in Angola. But that was just a start. Now it's 2018 and eight elections may change the scene. Since the military could took out Mugabe, I'm sure there will be elections in Zimbabwe. But who else will feel the winds of change? Cameroon has elections set to take the stage that may end BS reign of 30 years. But for now, citizens are fleeing in fear as government cracks down everywhere. Then there is Egypt, where President Sisi has led through fear since he replaced Morsi. Who will change him? Maybe Khalid Ali, a lawyer willing to contest and test democracy. Well, DRC Congo keeps pushing the date. They say it will be this year, but let's wait. Same in Libya, they haven't set the date, and Gaddafi's son may be a candidate. South Sudan wants to jump into elections too, but they are broken in conflict. What will they do? Meanwhile, Mali is planning a year of elections in the midst of many political complications. In Sierra Leone, elections may be the hope they need, as the president steps down to let another lead. In all these nations, do the opposition stand a chance? Who knows? But they have a chance to stand. Let's wait and see. We are the votes land. I sometimes wonder when I can no longer be an MC, who will take care of me? Those are deep thoughts right here, but I understand you loud and clear. Uganda is a young nation, but has a growing population of elderly left by the government in their vulnerability. But a recent intervention could be a national social revolution in 47 districts. The elderly receive benefits. The senior citizens grant pays judges 25,000 shillings per month. The pension scheme was initiated by Irish Aid, Ministry of Finance and DFID. For now it might seem small, but listen up y'all. 150,000 Ugandans have enjoyed the pension and up to 700,000 people have benefited in extension. You see, elderly spend most of the money on others in the family. They have a big responsibility since society has been affected by conflict and disease. That sounds like a cool pilot project with a big ripple effect. Indeed, it has the capacity to transform local and national economy. Beneficiaries can pay for labor and school fees. Others have gone into business and many have been a success. Also, studies have shown that bad nutrition has gone down. The grant has contributed to better food and children eating good meals do better at school. But here's the tricky part. This pilot pension scheme is only the start. It was mainly funded with development money, so a lot of Ugandans are wary. When the FID pulls out, will the government proceed? It's not a secret that social services don't always seem to be a priority. For some MPs, let's stay tuned and hopefully they can Coming years, we can depend more on services from our leaders than on charity. Corruption is stealing progress in Africa, and the story seems to be the same in Zambia. But one man took a step, he took action. Harry Kalaba protested through resignation. Now the former foreign affairs minister might even be a candidate to lead Zambia. President Edgar Lungu is on his second term and currently in court, fighting for a third one. He claims that the first one was incomplete. Since he came late to the presidential seat, if Lungu wins the case and gets to run again, he's likely to win. Things will stay the same. Still, Kalaba remains a member of parliament who can set an example in the government. Members of Kalaba's political party had his back and said he acted correctly, but not everyone likes his strategy. Check the comments of the former first lady who said he disregarded the rules in place. Guess he still has some questions to face. But there is one fact critics can't erase, that Lungu's regime is full of corruption and Harry Kalaba's protest was the exception in a nation where corruption is the expectation. I'm MC Yala reporting for news it's like I'm running out of data. I can't access my social media. It's true that internet comes at a very high cost because the content we host comes from abroad, which a lot of Ugandans can't afford. So if the content was local, would it be cheaper for us all? That's correct, and that's what's about to happen. In fact, the Uganda social media landscape is about to transform. The UCC announces the launch of local social media platforms. That sounds like a great innovation for Ugandan online communication. Internet usage in Uganda has grown. It feels good to have social media of our own. The UCC believes that the local social media could be accessible to 10 million people in Uganda. Wow, that's one out of four Ugandans. The UCC must be having big plans. They do. They want more people to have smartphones too. They now encourage cheaper production and spread internet access across the nation. I can only imagine what the future will be. More Ugandans will share knowledge and ideas using affordable internet and technology. Let's wait for now and see. Positive change for all never happens instantly. You better buy some more data and use the existing social media. If you want to make Facebook posts and watch YouTube news beat episodes. 
That was the news on the beat. Next week will be another hit. Still, let us like and Jay Sentino reporting live and direct with love and respect. Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Yes, follow the beat. Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Yes, follow the beat.